This is the Music History Today podcast for August 29th. On today's show, Rock Against Racism is formed, Oasis debuts, and George joins the Quarrymen. First up, though, on this date in 1946, Ella Fitzgerald recorded her song, It's a Pity to Say Goodnight. In 1955, trumpet player Ray Anthony married actress Mamie Van Doren. In 1958, George Harrison joined the Quarrymen with Paul McCartney and John Lennon. In 1958, same day, DJ Alan Freed held his first Big Beat concert review in Brooklyn, New York. Performers included Chuck Berry and Bill Haley and his Comets. In 1962, Elvis Presley's movie Kid Galahad premiered in movie theaters. In 1966, the Beatles performed in concert for the final time. It was in Candlestick Park in San Francisco. In 1966, same day, the TV variety show Hullabaloo aired its final episode. In 1970, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer recorded their set at the Isle of Wight Festival for their album Live at the Isle of Wight 1970. In 1976, the Rock Against Racism movement was started in response to comments that David Bowie and Eric Clapton made. When Bowie was quoted in an interview as saying, quote, I think Britain could benefit from a fascist leader. After all, fascism is really nationalism. I believe very strongly in fascism. People have always responded with greater efficiency under a regimental leadership. End quote. Bowie was also quoted in another interview as saying, quote, Adolf Hitler was one of the first rock stars. End quote. And, quote, You've got to have an extreme right front come up and sweep everything off of its feet and tidy everything up, end quote. Eric Clapton made comments during a concert that year in support of former conservative minister Enoch Powell, known for his anti-immigration River of Blood speech, at a concert in Birmingham, England. Clapton told the crowd that England had, quote, become overcrowded, end quote, and that they should vote for Powell to stop Britain from becoming, quote, a black colony, end quote. He also told the audience that Britain should, quote, get the foreigners out, get the wogs out, get the coons out, end quote. By the way, wogs is a derogatory phrase used in Great Britain for blacks, Middle Eastern, etc., etc., And then, Eric Clapton repeatedly shouted the National Front slogan, Keep Britain White. For Bowie's part, he apologized and blamed his thinking on an obsession with occultism and also drugs, because drugs usually cause racism. Sure. Clapton, as far as anyone can tell, has given so far a half-hearted apology and said he was drunk that day because, as we all know, it's not our racist thoughts that make us racist, it's drugs and alcohol. Yeah, again, sure. In any event, we go much deeper into this subject on this week's edition of the Music History In-Depth Podcast, which has dropped on this network as I am already talking. So check it out. Please like and subscribe. It's a good episode this week. In 1983, singer and actor Dan Aykroyd married actress Donna Dixon. In 1986, Madonna starred in the movie Shanghai Surprise with Sean Penn. The movie didn't do all that well. In 1999, Cher performed live in Las Vegas. HBO showed that performance. In 2002, after ultra-conservative Fox News host Bill O'Reilly went after Pepsi for having rapper Ludacris in its commercial, Pepsi pulled the commercial. O'Reilly had said that Ludacris was, quote, peddling antisocial behavior, end quote. In the next decade, Bill O'Reilly would lose his TV career after having one sexual harassment lawsuit too many for even Fox Network executives, while Ludacris would enjoy much success with the Fast and the Furious franchise starting in Too Fast, Too Furious, and then most of the other movies. Oh, and his next three albums would go to number one on the Billboard Albums chart. Like I've said before, kids, cancel culture is nothing new. It's been around for decades, and both sides have used it to their advantage. It is the way it is. 
In 2005, Hurricane Katrina struck New Orleans. Among the victims that day was Barry Cowsill of the group The Cowsills, who drowned. Fats Domino had to be rescued from his home during the storm, by the way. In 2009, people in Mexico City established the new Guinness Book of World Records for the largest number of people doing Michael Jackson's Thriller Dance with 13,597 dancers. I believe that record has actually been broken by now. Uh, Also, in 2020, singer Jessica Betts married actress Niecy Nash. In theater, in 1964, the musical A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum closed on Broadway. In award ceremonies that were held on August 29th, in 1986, the United States National Register of Historical Places included the studio in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where American Bandstand was shot into its registry. In 2002, Eminem and Pink were the big winners at the MTV Video Music Awards. And in 2004, Beyonce, Outkast, and Usher were the big winners at the MTV Video Music Awards. Albums that were released on August 29th in the UK include in 1980 when Jethro Tull released A. Meanwhile, in America, in 1966, Tony Bennett released A Time for Love. In 1967, Gladys Knight and the Pips released Everybody Needs Love, and the Supremes released their greatest hits album. In 1969, Stevie Wonder released My Sherry Amore. In 1977, Split Ends released Dysrhythmia. In 1980, UB40 released Signing Off. In 1987, Warren Zevon released Sentimental Hygiene. In 1989, the Rolling Stones released Steel Wheels, Elton John released Sleeping with the Past, and The Innocence Mission released their self-titled album. In 1994, Oasis released their debut album, Definitely Maybe, and The Palace Brothers released Days in the Wake. In 1995, Heart released The Road Home, and Driving and Crying released Wrapped in Sky. In 2000, the Scorpions released Moment of Glory and Sarah Brightman released La Luna. In 2005, Journey released Generations, Dion released Live in New York City, Eric Clapton released Back Home, and Iron Maiden released Death on the Road. In 2006, the Moody Blues released an introduction to the Moody Blues. Motorhead released Kiss of Death, Devin Allman's Honey Tribe released Honey Tribe, and... Bob Dylan did a twofer. He released Bob Dylan the Collection and also the album Modern Times. In 2011, 38 Special released 38 Special Live from Texas and the Counting Crows released August and Everything After Live at Town Hall. Singles that were released in the UK on August 29th include in 1975 when Earth, Wind & Fire released That's the Way of the World, and in 1980 Hall & Oates released You've Lost That Love & Feelin', their cover of the Righteous Brothers song. Meanwhile, in America, in 1958 Cliff Richard released his first single when his group, Cliff Richard and the Drifters, released their single, Move It!, Not to be confused with the group from America called The Drifters. In 1976, the Bay City Rollers released I Only Want to Be With You. In 1981, Hall & Oates released Private Eyes. In 1987, Warren Zevon released Reconsider Me. In 2004, Usher and Alicia Keys released My Boo. In 2006, Bob Dylan released Someday Baby. And in 2016, Lil Yachty and Digital Nas released King Boat. Before we go any further, we'd like to tell you that there is now a Music History In-Depth podcast where we go more in-depth on a few of the events that happen in music history for that particular week. The Music History In-Depth podcast runs every Tuesday on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts from, as does our Music Halls of Fame podcast, which talks about a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with other Music Halls of Fame, museums, and walks of fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday and can also be found on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to this podcast. 
Artists who were born on August 29th include the King of Pop, Mr. Michael Jackson, whose life is among the many subjects we touch upon on this week's Music History in Death podcast, which I already talked about. Jazz saxophonist, the legendary Mr. Charlie Parker, also celebrating a birthday today. Jazz great Dinah Washington as well, along with bassist Michelle Indegio Cello, singer Liam Payne, singer and actress Leah Michelle, David DeSorcias of Simple Plan, Kyle Cook of Matchbox 20, Rick Downey of Blue Oyster Cult, Chris Copping of Procol Harum, along with Jeff Whitehorn of Procol Harum, Eddie Reeder of Fairground Attraction, guitarist Tony McAlpine of the group Solo, Dan Truman of Diamond Rio, Elizabeth Frazier of Cocktoo Twins, keyboardist Dick Halligan of Blood, Sweat, and Tears, Sterling Morrison of the Velvet Underground, country music singer Jimmy C. Newman, Johnny Paris of Johnny and the Hurricanes, singer Gigi Allen, Carl Martin of the group Shy, Bob Markley of the psychedelic rock band The West Coast Experimental Art Band, also bass player Gilbert Rovere, drummer Jerry Fahili of Hot House Flowers, drummer Chris Gorman of the group Belly, bassist Alex Griffin of Ned's Atomic Dustbin, and trumpet and flugelhorn player Rolf Erickson. Artists who unfortunately passed away on August 29th include organist George Ruder, who passed away in 1738 at the age of 81. Composer Franz Joseph Glacier passed away in 1861 at the age of 63. Composer Charles Lee Williams passed away in 1935 at the age of 82. Composer Arthur de Grief passed away in 1940 at the age of 77. Composer Milan Harasta passed away in 1946 at the age of 26. Composer Lael Anderson passed away in 1972 at the age of 67. Composer Rene Leibowitz passed away in 1972 at the age of 59. Songwriter Sidney Clare passed away in 1972 at the age of 80. Singer and actor Leland T. Weed passed away in 1975 at the age of 74. Blues singer Jimmy Reed passed away from an epileptic seizure in 1976 at the age of 50. Musician and poet Kazi Nazrul Islam passed away in 1976 at the age of 77. Conductor Lehman Engel passed away in 1982 at the age of 71. Composer Alexander Abramsky passed away in 1985 at the age of 87. Country music singer Archie Campbell passed away in 1987 at the age of 73. Pianist Horace Henderson passed away in 1988 at the age of 83. Singer and actress Dixie Dunbar passed away in 1991 at the age of 72. The choreographer of Michael Jackson's music video, Beat It, and also Pat Benatar's music video, Love is a Battlefield, Mr. Michael Peters passed away from AIDS in 1994 at the age of 46. Country music singer-songwriter Charlie Feathers passed away from a stroke in 1998 at the age of 66. Singer Shirley Strechum passed away in 2001 at the age of 49. The conductor of the Hague Philharmonic from 1980 to 1991, along with the St. Louis Symphony from 1996 to 2002, Mr. Hans Vonk passed away from Lou Gehrig's disease in 2004 at the age of 62. The aforementioned Barry Cowsill of the group The Cowsills drowned during Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans in 2005 at the age of 50. Rockabilly singer Jumpin' Gene Simmons, not to be confused with Gene Simmons of KISS, passed away in 2006 at the age of 69. Jazz singer Chris Conner passed away in 2009 at the age of 81. Composer Hans Humbert passed away in 2010 at the age of 69. Blues guitarist Honey Boy Edwards passed away in 2011 at the age of 96. Violinist Dimitri Kogan passed away from cancer in 2017 at the age of 38. 
Big band saxophonist and band leader Larry Elgart passed away in 2017 at the age of 95. Reggae artist Lee Scratch Perry, the legendary Lee Scratch Perry, passed away in 2021 at the age of 85. And drummer Ron Bushy of the group Iron Butterfly passed away in 2021 at the age of 79. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is August 30th when in 1976, a riot in Notting Hill inspired The Clash. <laughs> ¶¶ 